and she's stubborn and she would not go. So y'all pray for her. She's at home and they gave her some powerful antibiotics and I think some prednisone, and some good stuff like that. So y'all pray for Ed Earl and lift her up. She is at home. So if any of you want to call her, I know she'd be glad to hear from you. So give her a call. Uh, Mary Dean is in 2014 at the hospital. Still don't know what's going on with her. But if any of you get a chance to either call or stop by, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call because you can't really understand her on the phone. I'll just be honest with you. But if you get a chance to stop by or send her a card, I know that would mean the world and all to her. And that's as far as I'm going to go because if I keep on with as many people as are sick, <laughs> I'll never get through them all. And I'll miss somebody and somebody will blow up at me. Say amen. But uh, Gary McCullum is also home. He was in the hospital for a couple of days. So continue to pray for Gary. And it's good to see Danny back there tonight. I know Anita will behave tonight because Danny's back there. Amen. All right. Take your Bible. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. We started two weeks ago on a message entitled, Is Anyone in Control of This Chaos? And we start talking about Israel had three choices to make. Israel could cave in and continue sinking into the utter state of despair that they were in in captivity. Or number two, they could compromise their faith and live in somewhat of a state of peace with the Assyrians and get along with them. Or number three, they could consecrate their trust in God, believe him, and look to him for sustaining grace and hope. That's the one we ought to do. Amen? That's the one Israel should have done. Not compromised. Not cave in. But to be consecrated. Dedicated to what the Lord would have us to do. We talked about verse 3a last time. God manages his wrath. The Lord is slow to anger. And great in power. Now tonight, let's pick up on number two. God manages the wicked. He's not only controlling his wrath, his anger, but he's also managing the wicked. Now, the Bible says in the second part of verse three, and will not, and will not at all acquit the wicked. In other words, they're not gonna get away with what they're doing. They're not going to win in the end. Thank God I've read the back of the book and we win. Say amen. They're not going to win. There will come a time when God will take no for an answer and enough will be enough and his judgment will fall. It's going to come, folks. I'm going to tell you, if God doesn't hurry up and do something, and we know we don't have to apologize, he's not going to, but I'll tell you, America is about as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's getting worse every single day. When in the world would we have ever thought of a person hoaxing an attack and blaming it on other people and they, and they planned it themselves? Who would have ever thought America would have ever seen anything like that? It's happening. It's happening. I mean, college campuses, you can't even pass out literature now without getting your nose punched. It's a shame the, the country we're living in today. And folks, they're not going to get away with what they're doing. Don't get bitter. Don't get depressed. Don't get agitated to the point of aggravation. And don't do like the yellow pages say, reach out and touch somebody. No. Let God be the judge. We're to give the gospel. That's our job. The wicked will get their just reward for the rebellion they've sought. And we will get our just reward for the repentance that we've sought. Thank God for repentance. We don't have to live in sin. We can live and serve the Lord. Psalms chapter 37 verse 28. For the Lord loveth what? That's fairness. And forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved how long? Didn't say, and tickle a shot right here. Didn't say pickled. Said preserved. Pickles are sour, I know. I pickled me some beets this week. Oh, them things was awesome. All you got to do is pickle you some beets is get a cup and a half of Splenda and a cup of vinegar and two jars of beets and a clean jar to put them beets in, drain them beets, put them beets in there, 
boil that vinegar and that sugar till it melts. Pour it over in there, let them sit 24 hours. And if you put one of them beets on your forehead, your tongue will beat your brains out trying to get to it. Good eating. Tickle. Nah, that's too much. That's too much. See, for a pickle, a tickle that don't like pickles, she sure does know a whole lot about it. But anyway, we, oh, you love them. Why don't you pass it on to your son? Ooh! He opened that can of worms. I didn't know that. You. Y'all watch it after church. going to have WrestleMania in the parking lot. Mama going to whoop up on the son and say, amen, that's going to happen. You know, <laughs> how did the message get out there from up here? I ain't figured that out yet, but anyway. <laughs> Thank God we're preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be what? Cut off. The wicked are not going to survive this thing. We are. So don't get frustrated with the world we live in. Don't get depressed. Depression about the situation we're in is admission you don't have faith in God. If you've got faith in God, it's not going to bother you what's going on in the world because we've got too much to do for God to worry about what's going on in the world. We ought to understand the world's going to fall apart. It's going to fall deeper and deeper into sin. That's why our job of preaching the gospel is so important. The wickeder it gets, the louder we've got to get. Amen? Come on, get loud. Amen? amen. Them teenagers back there, they don't know how to say amen because y'all ain't saying it. Say amen. amen. You've got to teach them to do it. Why? We've got to get loud about this thing. We've got to stand for something or fall for anything. Silence is deadly. Silence is deadly. We can't be silent anymore. We've got to share the gospel. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Look at there if you would. And therefore will the Lord wait. God's patient. You say, why, why does the world get away with this? God's patient. He wants to see them saved. He's given them every opportunity he possibly can that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of what? Judgment. But he wants to give you mercy. And he's given you every chance he can to receive that mercy. The lost to be saved, the Christian to draw nigh to him. Blessed are all they that what? Wait for him. Just let him do it, folks. Don't be judgmental. Don't be critical. Don't be a Sadducee or a Pharisee. Be an evangelist. Be happy with the gospel. Preach the gospel. Lift up the gospel. Share the gospel. Lift up Jesus. Then it says in verse 19, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. We're going to be there in the end. We're going to control the world in the end. Thou shalt weep no more. I don't want to cry no more. My cousin died and I cried. Got some bad news from people this week and I cried with them. But one day we're going to cry no more. Yeah, we do have tears right here. It breaks your heart when your family rejects Christ. It breaks your heart when your family re rebels against Almighty God and does opposite of what the Bible tells them to do. It hurts. It breaks our heart. And we weep tears. And we sigh. But one day, we'll weep no more. We'll cry no more. We're going to sing and shout and dance about that Baptist dance. You better believe I'm going to dance when I get to heaven. I'm going to do a holy jig. Say amen or obey. Won't be no hoochie coochie show. It'll be a holy jig. Amen. Praising God and thanking Him for His goodness and His graciousness and His mercy. The Bible says then, He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. You'll just talk to Him. He'll show you mercy. You'll just talk to Him. He'll forgive you. You'll just talk to Him. He'll help you. Prayer is a real thing. If you're willing to trust Him. He says, very clearly when he shall hear it he will answer thee he's got to hear it though if you don't ask you don't receive if you don't believe you don't receive you have got to take time to ask you got to hit this altar and pray you got to get on your knees at home and pray you got to spend time look i'll be honest with you this morning 
I didn't mean, I, I wasn't sick, but I didn't want to come to church. Because I just knew a nuclear bomb done gone off and it wasn't going to be nobody but me and Tekel. And he's here by the skin of his teeth. So wonder he ain't been bombarded. Everybody been sick in his house but him. God bless him. Don't let him get sick. Amen. He goes home and gets sick. I'll never hear the end of it. But anyway, <laughs> he's the only one who survived. But you know, even some of the sick were back this morning. Amen. Getting well already. God answering prayers. Had a great service today. Had a great time in the Lord's house. I had a negative, pessimistic attitude. But, I got some good news. Even in my negative and pessimistic attitude, because I was looking at the circumstances, I spent a whole lot of time yesterday at my computer saying, Lord, if you don't do it tomorrow, it ain't going to happen. Lord, if you don't do it tomorrow, it ain't going to happen. Lord, you got to bring some people to church. Lord, you got to keep the spirits up. Lord, you got to give us a good day. Even with my negative and pessimistic attitude, I asked. And he what? If he was here this morning, you know he answered. Amen? He answered. What a great day in the Lord. What a great time we had. If you ask, he will answer. Verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, the preachers of the word of God. And thine ears shall hear the word behind thee, saying... This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand or when ye turn to the left hand. God's gave you preachers and teachers and encouragers. I want to tell you something. Mark Bishop, he didn't just bless my gizzard. He blessed my soul today. I got the heebie-jeebies a couple of times. Y'all ever been in church and got the heebie-jeebies? Get them warm fuzzies running up and down your spine. Boy, a couple of them songs today, I had never heard them before, but they blessed my soul. They encouraged this preacher. I mean to tell you, I couldn't wait till he shut up so I could speak up. He'd been singing for an hour and a half. I said, is he ever going to stop and let me preach? And he did, and I did, amen. I was ready to preach by the time he got done. I come to church depressed. I got up this morning an hour early because I thought my wife wasn't going to be well enough to come to church. I thought, well, this is my chance to get to church early. So I got up at 7 o'clock, showered, shaved, and done all that good stuff, put the smelling goods on, put the clean clothes on, got ready to go out there and look, and we done got dressed. I said, well, dear Lord, there is a miracle in the, in the land. Yesterday she was dying. Today she's going to church. Hallelujah. And she's ready early. I said, Jesus is coming back today. We were going to get in the car an hour earlier than usual. She's coming out the door and my phone rung. Ed and Earl had to go to the doctor granddaughters in Durham sons in Virginia Beach other sons working so you know who it fell on there went my hour ahead right out the door I had to go get Ed and Earl take her to the doctor and got here at 930 and I was already depressed I was already discouraged and I thought dear Lord now I got to go to church an hour later than I meant to be here and ain't nobody going to be here and boy was I wrong amen thank God I prayed Thank God I listened to what he said. Even though I saw discouragement, even though I heard discouragement, I had wisdom enough to say, Lord, please, get us above our circumstances. Get us above our circumstances. And I'll tell you, I didn't think we'd have this many tonight. I'm tickled to death. If I had glue, I'd put them in your seat and make sure you're here next Sunday. <laughs> Y'all are dead crowd now. I'm going to keep y'all an extra hour. I was going to let you go early, but I'm going to make you stay late. Yeah, go to shouting now. All right, I hear you. Jeremiah 20. You go fight with your son leave me alone. But anyway, Jeremiah 23, 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will rise unto David a righteous branch. That's Jesus. A king shall reign and prosper. That's the millennial reign. And shall execute judgment, fairness, and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall, be, shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our what? Righteousness. Jesus is one day going to rule this world. There won't be no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, no more sickness, no more flu. 
No more strep throats, amen, Tammy. I'm telling you, that bunch passes around strep throat like most people pass around a Pepsi Cola. Hey, let me tell you something. Thank God we'll get to heaven. May not be no strep throat. May not be no Pepsi Cola. But ain't gonna be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more injustice, no more hoaxes, no more elections. Boy, I'm getting y'all to shout now, ain't I? Heaven's sounding better all the time, isn't it? Heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even here unto you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was found guile in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, that he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. That's what we got to do. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what's happening to us, commit ourselves unto the righteous judge because he will not let you down and he will not do you wrong. Say amen. Number three, God manages the whirlwind. Nehemiah 1.3c. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and in the clouds. But the clouds, listen to this, are the dust of his feet. Now, Gail, don't you get mad at me. What did I just say? Yeah, I'm not getting mad at me, okay. She done a good job back in the auditorium yesterday. But I'll tell you, if you were to get a microscope and magnify a thousand times, and let somebody walk down that aisle of that carpet, you won't see it with the naked eye. But when you walk down that carpet, you know what's going to jump up every time you put your foot down? Dust. You ain't going to see it, but it's there. You're not going to see it, but it's there. Because why? It's a dusty old world. The point that's trying to be made right here is this. Just as you may not see that dust when you walk across that floor, while we're living on this earth, you may not see the hand of God. You may not see the power of God. You may not see the providence of God. But it's there, and it's powerful, and it's real. So don't be le leaning on what you see, or how you feel, or what you hear. Believe what he says. Somebody would say, I don't believe there's no dust on that carpet. I'd have to go get a microscope and blow it up and prove it to him. Listen, God's not going to prove himself to you. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him, believe that he has the power. And that God is so big that the clouds are the dust of his feet. If you can't see the dust walking across the floor on the carpet, and God's dust is as big as the clouds in the sky, how big is God? And I tell you one thing, if he's a big God, he's big enough to take care of a big preacher. What are y'all laughing at? He's big enough to take care of a big church member too. Say amen on me. He's big enough to take care of all of us. Folks, this example is important to his almighty power. Storms come and go every day in various places. But the Lord is still in full control. He will have his way in his time and in his plan. He's more powerful than the storm. We're still seeing the scars from that hurricane that come through in the fall. They're everywhere. But I'm going to tell you something. That parrot, parrot king was powerful. It takes a whole lot to make me scared. But I was more than scared that day. I was scared. I'm telling you, when you're going down Piedmont Drive, because Sister Reem over here knows what I'm talking about, you've got to go down Piedmont Drive every once in a while. Right, Sister? You've got to have some of that Chinese food at the buffet down there. And, of course, we wanted the Chinese buffet that day. We was at Olive Garden because I had my pasta pass. But when we left there, and them phones went off, I said, Wendy, something bad must be going on. All our phones is going off. But you know what? I didn't stop eating. I kept on eating. Oh, it's just raining out there. Ain't no big deal. We got ready to leave. We walked to the door and I said, oh my soul, there ain't no way we're going to get to the car without getting soaked. Because before I come in, I had an umbrella. I was first class. Had that black umbrella. I got out of my car. 
popped that umbrella. I stood up, got out the car. The wind took my umbrella to J.C. Penney's. I watched it while it flew across the highway. And I'm standing there taking a shower in the middle of Olive Garden parking lot. And then I stood there looking across and said, my umbrella's at J.C. Penney's. My car's across. I said, this ain't going to be good. And it wasn't. I, and Wendy's still young enough to run. I can't run. I can barely walk. She run to the car. I ain't so wet. I said, shut up. Leave me alone. I was soaked from head to toe. Then we got to going up Piedmont Drive. I'm going somewhere with this. Just hang on. There was six inches of water coming downhill. Have you ever tried to drive uphill and six inches of water coming downhill? Your motor don't like that. Your tires don't like that. I ain't never been so glad to see IHOP in my life. Because once I got over that hill at IHOP, I said, hallelujah, it's all downhill from here. Was I stupid wrong? Still six inches of water everywhere, trees falling, mud slides. I was nervous when I got home. I went in the house and got under the covers and hid. Why? Because that was the worst rain I had ever been in in my life. Trying trees falling right in front of us. We had to dodge to miss one coming down off the side of the hill. I said, Lord, if you get this fat preacher home, next time I hear beeps, I don't care what's sitting in front of me, I'm leaving. I'm going home. They tried to tell me and I wouldn't listen. Oh! Ain't that the average Baptist? You try to tell them something and they won't listen. You sound the alarm and they won't listen. I'm trying to tell you what a mighty God we serve. Listen to me. Greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. He's more powerful than any storm, more powerful than any tornado, or any hurricane. His power is shown in the fact that those clouds that bring those horrible rains and winds and lightning and thunder are just the dust that blow from the ground when God walks across the floor. If that I went through that day was just the dust falling around his feet when he walks, wow, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, the Bible says in Job chapter number 38 verse 1, then the Lord said, answer Job out of the what? Out of the storm and said, who is this that darkened the counsel by, by, by words without what? Knowledge. In other words, who's running the mouth and they don't know what they're talking about? Who's running the mouth and they don't know what they're talking about? The average Baptist. We need to study the word and know what we're talking about, amen? Gerda, my boy, that could be a tickle, couldn't it, Miss Tickle? Open the mouth without thinking, punch that thing next to you and make him listen to you, amen. No, it's you. <laughs> it's Mike. <laughs> Gird up now thy loins like a man. For thou, I didn't know that was next, Mike. I really didn't. <laughs> Boy, sometimes you can preach and get in trouble not mean to. Amen. <laughs> Woo, some things are so funny I laugh myself. <laughs> for I will demand of thee an answer and answer thou me. You ever got in trouble and you got in front of your mom and daddy and they was reaming you and you couldn't blah, blah, blah. answer me, boy. Blah, 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 blah. That's how we're going to be when we stand before God if we walk this life with no knowledge. If we walk in this life without listening, we walk in this life without paying attention. We're going to stand before God. Blah, 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 blah. I can't answer you, God. I can't. I don't have an answer. I wish I had an answer. If you'd listen to him on earth, you'll have an answer in heaven. Say amen. Oh, where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Can I put that in some modern terminology? My mama made it clear to me one day what this means. Now don't you say amen right here and you shut your mouth over yonder. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Jason. I had a bad mouth on me when I was a kid. But I didn't realize I got it from my mama. And as bad as my mouth was, hers was worse. Hello, where do you think I got it from? So one day I got the mouth and off at her. I didn't think she was fair to me. And my mama turned around 
in that kitchen and looked at me. And she said, boy, and I was 18 years old, she said, boy, I brought you into this world. And if you don't shut that mouth, even though it's like mine, I'll take you out of this world. You know what I done? I shut my mouth, amen. Because I knew, even though I was 18 years old, taller than my mama, weighed more than my mama, my mama could still beat the daylights out of me in a heartbeat, say amen or oh me. Mike's gonna find that out in a few minutes. <laughs> Praise God, I'm a, somebody hold my mule while I shout, amen. <laughs> that was good, that was good. Let me tell you something, folks. Who in the world is selling tickets? Oh, my soul, this is getting bad up here. Who in the world are we to doubt or question the power of Almighty God? But every time you get depressed, and every time you get discouraged, and every time you get defeated, you know that's what you're doing. You're back-talking God with doubt. Back-talking God with skepticism. Back-talking God when he knows the truth. Be encouraged. There is no doubt who is in control of this chaos. There's no doubt who's in control of this world. And folks, we just got to listen to him. You see, we're going to give an invitation in just a minute. And the Lord's going to ring your bell about something, I don't know what. I, I, I know one person's gonna get under conviction about talking bad about his mama, but outside of that, I, I don't know what you're gonna get convicted about. And if he's smart, he better be the first one down on this altar. Oh me. I don't know your heart. You don't know mine, but God does. And if the beeper of your heart of conviction goes off tonight, Answer the call. Answer the call. Because you know what makes God happy? Is even though you may not have rang his phone in a long time. You may not have rang his phone. You may not have called him. But he sure does get excited when you call him. He picks that phone. Answers because you called. You learn a lot when you're a kid. And I used to stay with one grandma two or three weeks, and another grandma two or three weeks, because I knew they loved me and wouldn't work me as hard as my mama did if I stayed home. Y'all a lying dead crowd. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And if I worked for them, they'd pay me. I like that. Then you'd paid at home. Mow the grass at home. Good job, son. Mow the grass for Ruby. Love you. Here's five dollars. Five dollars ain't much date back in them days. That's a whole lot of money. Amen. She gave me a five dollar bill. But my grandma was in pretty good bad shape. She had many strokes all the time. She couldn't call you by your real name. She had a nickname for you. She called me and Dennis both Abraham. I ain't figured that out yet. Why well, she called both of us the same thing. She didn't call Ruby Ruby, she called her Katie. We learned her little nicknames for all of us, and we learned who she's talking about. But on around four o'clock, even though I had sat with her all day long, I had fed her, I'd walked her back and forth to the bathroom, I walked her out in the yard to see the garden, I sat on the porch with her and swatted flies away from her so she could sit on the porch. Didn't make no difference what all I'd done. If that clock struck four o'clock, she'd look at me and say, has Abraham called yet? I said, which Abraham you talking about? You know which one I'm talking about, ain't you? She won't know if Dennis had called. Dennis gets off work at 4 o'clock. And if by 5 o'clock Dennis hadn't called, her nerves was told up, why ain't Abraham called? Why ain't Abraham called? I, I thought, what are you worried about him for? I'm here with you. What are you worried about him? Finally, she'd say, go in there and call Abraham, see if he fell asleep on the couch. I won't know he's all right. I'd have to go in the kitchen, dial Dennis's number. Dennis, are you home? Yeah. Vanna wants to speak to you. Had a long cord, had to take it out on the porch and hand it to her. You all right, sugar? She didn't even ever call me sugar. You all right, sugar? You have a hard day? 
I thought I had a hard day. I took care of you all day long. Swatted your flies, fed you, took care of you, and you ain't worried about me. But she didn't worry about Dennis. She didn't worry about me because what? I was right there with her. He went with her. She won't know where he was and make sure he was all right. So usually he called, but when he didn't call, he got a call. Because <laughs> she'd make me call for her. When's the last time God heard from you? And it wasn't a complaint or an aggravation or doubt or skepticism. When's the last time you just said, Lord, I trust you. Lord, the rain's falling on me, the thunder's crashing, the lightning's rolling. I, Lord, I, I've got a hard way to go. I just need to know you love me. And you know he'll pick up the phone and answer. You just talk to him. Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached your word.